Okay, I think we can get started to be respectful of people's time. I know we are not many people right now, but we can maybe start with introductions. I know Dan uh, was just uh, about to, to, to make it. He was able to, to get just on time, hopefully. Um, because yeah, it's, all, it's always a, sometimes a, a bit confusing with the, the time zones and everything, but we, we will be uh, more careful in the future to share, um, to share a links to the calendar uh, so you can have a, uh, access to all the future events. So who would like to go first in introductions? I know Jonathan is also new here. I, I think he, he said uh, earlier uh, when subscribing that he is interested in going forward maybe and presenting. Uh, he's working with our tools uh, at his company currently, uh, but I, I was not exactly clear on, on what that means. Sure, well, let me introduce myself then. So um, I'm Jonathan, I, I'm the CEO of a company called Fieltop. My colleague Tomek is on the call as well. Um, we're working with CCAN and frictionless stuff uh, for the United Nations. Our company mission is to harmonize health data. So we're very much within this space, but particularly health data and public health. And um, we work a lot with low and middle income countries as well with public health surveillance and, and data management. Um, and so we have been working with CCAN for about a year now. Um, and we're doing stuff with good tables and... and um, uh, and table schemas and things as well. And uh, we met up with Paul Walsh and Rufus uh, in some one-to-one -one calls. And uh, we're just really keen to find out more about the community, what the community is doing, whether we can contribute uh, on the side of this other work that we're doing um, and, and how best to connect with people really. So that's why we're here, yeah. Okay, thank you for introducing yourself. Uh, well, I guess we will have a, a lot to discuss. We, we are uh, basically having many, many tools that are being worked on. We are building new libraries. Uh, one such library is called Frictionless Pi. Uh, we also have, an, uh, this one is in Python, and we also have new libraries in Swift. So yeah, there, there's some work going on. We do have a presentation that we can uh, introduce you to. And this is from the technical lead of the project for Frictionless Pi. So you'll get a better overview of this. I'm basically uh, new to this frictionless uh, stuff here at Datopian. Uh, I, I have been working with CCAM too, but yeah, I, I think it will be best to just have a look at this awesome presentation from the technical lead. And hopefully if you have any question uh, on whatever topic that I may not be able to answer because I, I don't have that much background yet uh, on this, I'm ramping up, ramping up and getting up to speed. But if you have questions, uh, we can add those in the meeting doc and near the bottom, or we can also post directly on Discord. Um, we'll be happy to answer questions there. We have people, Lily couldn't make it today, unfortunately. Hopefully Rufus is going to be joining in, in a little while. Usually is there, but um, for the moment we are a few, so we can discuss anything we want. We have plenty of time, uh, but yeah, to be respectful, respectful of people's time, we can just uh, have a look at the meeting doc, go through the agenda. And um, if you didn't see the link already, I'll repost it in the Zoom chat so you can have a look. And um, yeah, I see, yeah, only Dan was missing from the list. Okay, so from here, um, I guess we all have the meeting doc. And um, if you don't know already, we are on Twitter. If you want to follow updates, we will be posting updates when, whenever we have events going on, uh, usually those are the community, community hangouts like this one. And also, by the way, excuse my uh, foreign uh, accent. Uh, I'm, I'm, usually, I'm from Canada, but the French part and my English is really bad. I, I, I grew up in a French little town, so excuse me for this. And I've been living, living in Mexico City for the past five years or so, so I don't have much practice in English. So please forgive me, but hopefully, it's all understandable, and if not, let me know. <laughs> so uh, besides this, we do have updates, like I said, and we can start first maybe with frictionless pie. This is like the most important tool that we are working on right now. And we do have a video from the technical lead uh, showing us how it works. So let's, let me just share my screen so you can have a look at this and we can watch the video together. 
Any other questions before we get started? Everything, just a second. Yeah, hi. Hi, who's joining? Okay, hi. Okay, sorry. I, I was thinking uh, you guys can hear me. Okay, uh, my name is Yusuf. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes, perfectly. Not a clear. Okay, great. Uh, I think it's a bit dark here. I'm from Nigeria and uh, yeah, I'm a data analyst too. I work with geospatial data and uh, you know, I work in the health sector with the Catholic Relief Services. So uh, I've been hearing a little uh, so much about the frictionless data, the frictionless fellowship and the community in general. And I think your work is so amazing. And then, uh, by the way, I was actually uh, starting a new organization with my friends. So it's more like a sustainable development, you know, organization that focuses more on uh, urban development and the new urban agenda generally. So, and then we work with a lot of data, but I really don't know, maybe our, our work and the focus actually captures the, or resonate with the theme and uh, idea behind the frictionless data and tools. But I think, uh, well, I'm still in the process of, you know, uh, exploring these channels and possibilities and, you know, how eventually we can get to use most of your tools since a lot of them are open and free, you know. So uh, I'm just new here. Uh, this is my first meeting and I'm really, really excited to be here to learn a lot about what you do, what, you know, how we can contribute. You know, by the way, I also write uh, uh, software programs as well. And then I do a lot of uh, data science work too. So I'm thinking in a way we can actually have this a window of opportunity for us to actually work together or, you know, learn from you, use your tool and help you to share and promote here in our whole local area. So that's just about my own, uh, maybe uh, two cents, if I may say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ed. Yusuf. Yeah, we were, we're looking forward to, to working with people in the community. We currently we have, uh, like I said before, uh, we have a technical lead working on the main projects we are working on right now. We do have a few people uh, here at Daytoken involved in this, uh, but of course we we welcome pull request, anything you can contribute technically or in the documentation. We are a friendly bunch, so yes, op hopefully we can work together again in the in the future. And right now, I was just going to introduce you to uh, one of those tools. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. It's Frictionless Pi. And I was going to, um, to show a, a short demonstra demonstration that uh, our technical lead uh, recorded for us. So um, let's get started with this and uh, see you in a few minutes. Should we be hearing something? Uh, yes, let me try again. Maybe if I unmute myself, let's see. Can you, can you hear something? Uh, that is strange. Why is my output? Yes, it should be recording the sound. Uh, Okay, I can't quite figure this out. And um, if you want, um, this is something you can watch on your own too. I'm going to share the link in the meeting docs instead um, because for some reason the sound is not outputting. But I don't think this is an issue. This is a long video of like seven minutes or so. So uh, what we can do, I, I will share the link uh, in the meeting doc and also share it on Discord so you have access for later. And we will also add this to the blog post that we will add the, with the, the link to the YouTube video, which is this recording for later. And I see that Rufus joined us. I'm here, yes. Hi, Rufus. I'm sorry for being late and I've had internet issues. I'm in a new location and I have internet. And I will be here for only another 15 minutes after the drop at half past. But yeah, it's great to see people. It's great to see Dan on the call. It's great to see Jonathan. Jonathan and uh, there were some non-video participants who I can't see 
uh, Oleg, Tomek, and Yusuf, who have their, Oleg has got his video on now, wonderful. And Elias, welcome Elias and Yusuf. And are we recording the call? We are, which is wonderful. Hey folks, so let's, we can just kind of do Q and A like normal a bit. If you guys have got questions or want to know what the updates are or what we're up to, yeah. I'm curious, Dan, how you got on with um, your date, your your project open data slash DCAT US kind of profile work. Yeah, I, it's been a lot going on. I haven't uh, been able to make any new spreadsheets with mappings or anything like that. But um, you know, these projects always move slower in reality than in conversations. But uh, we have been talking about about doing those kinds of mappings and even maybe making a more data package like uh, metadata structure, kind of the default in DCAN. Um, so it's, yeah, it's tough because there's kind of a lot in flux. We kind of rushed to get an initial release of, uh, of this new DCAN to, mar to market. I mean, it's not for sale exactly, but, um, but there's still a couple things that are that are kind of to be determined. So sorry, I don't have a real concrete update, but um, but there's definitely a lot of interest also in like kind of the whole, the something similar to a data package loader um, to be able to kind of load, you know, a zip file or something like that into the portal, which, um, you know, I think has existed in CCAN for a long time. Uh, we're seeing more need for something like that. So not, you know, not like, direct uh, requests for frictionless support, but a lot of things that like all the sort of existing frictionless concepts would really help us uh, are kind of like ready to go without having to think through things. So I think there's there's more, more movement towards that, but I don't have anything to share yet. Okay, well, I mean, one thing to say for everyone is like, so, you know, for a large part of this, you could, A, you could use microservices and you could converge on like JavaScript. Um, yeah. I mean, I can share, like, I mean, can you enable screen sharing like um, Sebastian? Yes, let me have a look. It should be it's enabled. enabled for people other than you, the host at the moment. Um, great, great, well Dan, I know, and these things always, I mean, the thing is you often need some kind of pressing need, you know, from a client to do something, right? Um, or it makes you do something e that you need to do easier. Um, right. I mean, in general, and this cool, I point out that a large amount of stuff that I do in Frictionist is sort of converging with the work on the DMS, uh, you know, the next generation data management system that that is actually kind of coming together now quite rapidly. Um, at, at least at Datopian's end, and and to, to some extent with with OKF, and um, yeah, like um, so you know, and, and often given parts of that move more rapidly when there is stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Also, I don't think um, I don't see today. There's, there's a couple of things I should really present that are important for the community, um, and that we could also paste in the channel sometimes, uh, even though people are not on the call. Um, you know, so people not on the call can see them as well as the meaning doc, which we could also paste the link to. But it's kind of cool to paste some of the links. So I'm gonna give you a bit of a whistle stop tool of some of the things that I think um, uh, upcoming. Um, and I should kind of line them up in my browser quickly so I don't go through lots of things at once. And I, I have them all nicely lined up. So, um, uh, dun, 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 dun. Rufus, while you get that set, can I just make a comment? Yeah. Um, that's uh, I just switched, I just met with the uh, with several of the folks behind the Swiss CCAN portal, the federal yes. part. They're very, very, very keen to see DCAT AP and frictionless come together. Um, we could probably yeah. Yeah. invest yeah. time yeah. and energy into helping yeah. that. Yeah. Just to be clear. If they're fundamentally kind of different, right? Yeah, but they're in profile of the frictionless set. Like you could do a profile like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's that's. Um, we have that lots of projects. So we, you know, we run data.gov. So like, there's a D, there's a DCAT profile there, and there's there's ones in Europe. But th that's that's just up to someone. I mean, when you say come together, there's like you have I'm to. I'm talking talk about giving the community a path to get their data sets faster into. A 
Yeah, DKAP doesn't have a lot to do with that, right? Though, I mean, okay. but yeah, yeah, I got I got you. I mean, you can yeah. use that profile to harvest or whatever. I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that I, profile is yeah. just the, 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 the lingua franca uh, of a lot of the government projects. And it would be really yeah. great to get a bridge there going. Yes, well, just people, it, 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 yeah, it's some kind of profile of whatever. I mean, it, it, the mapping of that is kind of quite trivial, but someone would need to, someone else need to do it. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's at the made a profile level. But yeah, okay. Um, the really, really big news, I think, um, at the moment on, on and I don't know if people, we're not kind of, I don't know if there's been a big blog post about it, but would be this RFC at the moment. Um, which is like the major kind of RFC on the driver point on 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 frictionless, which is hey, there's a there's a really clear kind of like my like kind of plan of how we're going to go through or on the kind of frictionless. Quite for me, quite a breakthrough in kind of conceptual stuff, which was out of discussions. There were discussions on the channel and stuff, but mainly uh, um, Evgeny and myself and some other people and and Lily and Sebastian and others. But basically. You could think of there's two things that frictionless kind of at the more base level can offer, which is what I'm going to call, I don't know whether drivers is the best name or SDKs, but um, I think I like the word driver because the operating system analogy. So in frictionless data, if you think of it like as ultimately like some kind of operating system um, for data, you know, if you think of a core operating system as really base stuff, like how do you interface with the video card? How do you interface with the hard disk? And those things are drivers, right? Like you implement a driver to talk to your hard disk or to talk to your, and there's some standard API the kernel will expect and you write an adapter for that, yeah? That's what a driver is. And then there's like, you could think of slightly higher level functionality that then is built on top of that. You could think of that as the Unix utilities. I don't know what we call them, um, whatever. But basically, um, so the very low level in, in frictionless are the ideas of like, a data set and a resource and a schema for a table. Like those are like, those are your drivers. If you like, you, you've got many, many different source systems that have those objects, whether it's, we're just talking about DKAP as a metadata profile, but you know, a database, Postgres, you know, you want to connect to that. And then there's your, you know, and, and so there's a lot of different systems which you want that basic drive for. You want a, a data set, you want a resource or a file conception or a table conception. And then you want the actual schema for a table. And those want to show up in like, you base those drivers can be written for almost every, you know, you, you can write that driver for, you know, for each difference, you know, you, you know, net CDF, you know, the DCAP profile for, for X, for this particular data platform, for Socrata, for CCAN, for blah, blah, blah. You can write those drivers, right? And they're sort of an adapter from, some whatever the specific kind of framework that system uses to a common framework, which is the frictionless kind of pattern. Yeah. Then there's what you'd call, we're calling at the moment toolkits. Um, so the toolkit is a basically a collection of utilities in one helpful bundle, right? You know, so, you know, in general, like you install Unix, you get all the utilities, you you know, you get cat, you get grep, you get sed, you get blah, you get all these utilities that make your life easier. Yeah. And that's, but it's bundled together in one useful thing called Unix, the Unix kind of shell or the, you know, this or that. Yeah. And so these are the two things that we're going to refactor a lot. You know, if you think of a moment and there's a bit of the zoo, like if you go to frictionless, it's like literally confusing for people. Like, there's tabulator, if you're just looking at the Python libraries, there's there's like frictionless, there's there's data package pi, and then there's table schema pi. I might have even spelled it wrong, but there's like there's like three or four libraries just in Python. And in a way, you just don't want that. You, you It's just confusing. And it, it wasn't like how we, um, uh, I'm spelling tabulated it wrong somehow. It's not like we intended that at the beginning, but it's kind of how things have, have arose, arisen. Now there's two things that I do want to um, say, which is that there's a way you could go, which is completely the pandas route and pandas is an amazing system, but it is like everything included. Like pandas is a beast of a, of a, of a toolkit. Like it's, it's kind of like, it's amazing and it's a beast. And it means actually it's quite hard if you, I'm not like a core developer on pandas, but if you follow pandas, like it's quite hard to 
refactor or add to like Wes McKinney has got like stuff about why, you know, it's an awesome, awesome toolkit built on NumPy, but you might want, um, I think the approach we've had, which is like small pieces, like you have validation as a tool, you have um, describing as a tool, you have extracting or doing ETL as a tool is a good way to go, but you kind of want them in one, you know, for most users, you just want to install one thing and you have all of those working kind of to some extent. You don't want to bother with the underlying aspect. So basically what we're saying is there's going to be drivers, which are kind of for everything. They can, and for every language, you can have them for R, you can have them for JavaScript, you can have them for PHP. And then you're going to have toolkits, which are probably only, that if people want to go implement them, are probably like for Python, R, and JavaScript. If, if even to start with, just we're going to have Python, and we'd love to, and that's more like, it's not it's more a collection of these utilities that work together. And so if you check out um, um, this one, um, like this is the kind of prototype that's been built and it, it, it's not really a lot of new code, but it's organizing it together of like one thing you'd install called frictionless, um, you know, like you install it, um, and then you can do like validate, you can do, you get a command line tool, you get a Python library, you, you, and you can do describing, you can extract data, you can validate data, you can transform data, you can extend it. You can, it's just kind of all of those useful utilities in one. And that will be the toolkit. And probably I'm pretty certain there'll be a JavaScript one because I want a JavaScript one. Uh, and so Datopian will fund like quite a bit of a JavaScript one for reasons I will, I could go into, but like, you know, I, I, I can talk more, but basically I think JavaScript, like Python is massive in the, the data science, data management community. Um, R is pretty big. Um, and JavaScript, if you build it, it, it's like, it runs everything on the web. And it means if you want to build desktop apps, the way I'd build a desktop app today is I'd build it in something built probably around JavaScript just because of like things like Electron and stuff like that. So there's a reason to build the toolkit in those, in those potential languages. Um, there's the other point is that SDKs, the drivers, the drivers, we're going to call them. I think there's a way we should refact new ones should be built in a kind of standardized way. Um, that, that there's one actual library like this that needs to get migrated to the frictionless space, but it's called data.js at the moment. But basically it's, it behind, the, it, it has three objects, it has like a, it has a data set object, it has a, uh, a resource object, it has a table schema object and maybe some others, but it also has a single function like open. Basically the low level library just does stuff like given a file or a folder, given a file, give me back a resource object. You know, that's just a fundamental like activity. Uh, give me a, given a folder, assume that it's a data package and give it, return it to me as a data set or a data package. Um, and do just very convenient things for me. Like the really basic of any system of like, give me a file stream, you know, give, give me the descriptor, give me some information and basically give me uh, a stream or, or, you know, give me the equivalent open. And so this is a very, you know, in Python, you could write this really fast. You know, it's like, it's a day or two of work, you know, to write this. It's not much more of a wrapper, but it, it like doing that for other systems is a bit more work, like doing it for NetCDF or something else. But you could write these kind of drivers um, this way. And I think they'd have a quite a common pattern to them. Um, so while we're not going to go and say, oh, people who've written existing data package R or data package Julia, like, you have to change it, but like future ones will encourage to be written in this kind of pattern, the basic drivers. I'm out of time for today. Uh, I have one more thing I was gonna show you, which I think was kind of cool. Let me just show it in the one minute I have remaining, which is JSON schema. Uh, it's JSV, we need to rename it because JSV is a very popular, another tool, JSON schema validator. Um, at, the, at the moment it tells me it's used by 5,000 packages because it's got the same uh, <laughs> NPM name. Unfortunately, this is not yet used by 5,000 packages. But basically, it's quite a cool little tool at the moment that taken a JSON schema, including like data resource or a data package. So a common problem people have, right, is I, I've got my team, I've got a metadata schema. It might be DCAT AP, it might be whatever my metadata schema is for my project. I want documentation for it. I want um, an example Python file from it. Now, as you maybe know, the specs for 
frictionless data set, frictionless uh, resource are written in JSON schema, the actual format, you know, the, the formal specification. So you can take that formal specification and put export it as Markdown or HTML. So this is a very simple JavaScript library and tool that will do that. But you, you know, that you, you, we want at the moment, like just to be able to automatically document or present material about um, metadata schema. So it's an example of a useful tool and it does a bit more than that. It even like gives you a, it will do things like give you a Python um, file ready with the metadata field set up that you could just use to, you know, to give someone it's like, oh, I want to, I'm a Python developer. I know nothing about CCAN or about my system, but I want a template Python file, uh, you know, example.py that would load a file to CCAN for me with the right fields. And it will sort of, it sort of do, does that kind of functionality. I have to jump. I'm really sorry to leave so early. Keep the discussion. We will be back next month. I will run in another session or so in sooner about the future of data management systems. So stay tuned. And I love you all. Yeah. <laughs> Until Ruth, next time. Awesome seeing you, man. And listen, can you please put your items on the agenda next time? Yay, I will do. I have been stacked. I apologize. I have been stacked. Help me, Oleg. Become the secretary. Become, help us. We need help at Frictionless. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Ciao. Okay, I see. What else do we have? Do we have any announcements? Otherwise, uh, I guess we can go on with uh, the discussion about Google Analytics that Oleg uh, kindly wanted to share about. So we could get started with this. Otherwise, um, let us know if you have any other topic you would like to present. There's also, um, yes, I think that's the main item for today. If we have time afterwards, I'd be interested to dive back in a little bit to that issue of like DCAT AP and frictionless and sort of bridges and profiles and all that. But um, just if there's. Yeah, certainly. I can see you've shared a comment in the, in the chat. And if I do not know how to answer this or anyone else on the call, we'll be sure to record this on, either on a GitHub issue or on Discord, and we will make sure that our technical lead will answer back. The comment was actually kind of unrelated, but yeah, cool. Okay. Otherwise, we can capture any questions that people have uh, here near the bottom in the meeting doc. We do have a section discussion or meeting or me maybe notes at the bottom. We can write any questions we have there, and I'll make sure to, to forward those uh, in the right place. So Oleg, are you still up to uh, for your discussion about Google Analytics and other alternatives? Um, sure. I just want to say that uh, I, I think Rufus did mention one thing that really captures my attention, which is the the, the whole idea of adapters and plugins. Um, I'm, I'm not I'm not so keen on the idea of reinventing Unix and talking about operating systems. I mean, we have we have great operating systems. The web is a great operating system. Linux is a great, or you know, Unix is a great operating system. I don't see the point of reinventing that, but I do. I do see uh, out there a need for giving people easy-to-use modular building blocks for applications based on data. You know, designing data architectures. We need to talk about that more. And I, in the frictionless data project, uh, there was a, there was a, there was a good start in that direction. I thought when you had this kind of like. This one page where like all the tools were on there kind of jumbled together because I felt that looked a lot to me like the WordPress library of plugins, you know, it was like building blocks for projects with frictionless data. In the new website, I'm, I'm kind of missing that, you know, it seems a bit too structured and, and there's these big projects and so it starts to sound more like a software ecosystem, you know, like a, like a, you know, like Microsoft with, you know, here's Office and here's SQL Server and, you know, product ranges. And I really think we should we should we should have things that are that, that talk to each other, um, and and you know there are the people out there are really interested in this no code movement. And we talked about this a little. We touched a bit this on this on the, on the last call, and I, and I and I'd really like to unravel more of what Rufus was getting on about. 
It's just that, I, you know, I, I don't want anyone to dominate the conversation and Sebastian, you're new and I want you to be in control of this meeting and it should follow the agenda. So power to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I think your input is really important. Um, as you said, I'm new to this, so I, I don't really have any input I can, I can give you. All I can do is maybe share your comments, concerns, and everything. I'm not sure if this is being captured anywhere, maybe on GitHub, maybe on Discord. Uh, I think you're bringing good points. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. No, no, I'll, I'll put up some notes. And, uh, oh, by the way, I'm can je suis Canadien aussi, donc uh, tu peux toujours parler en français avec moi. Parfait. <laughs> L'anglais n'est pas de barrière, nécessairement. So you, you said that you wanted me to talk about the analytics thing, was that, did I get that right? This is something you mentioned uh, on Discord that you were up to. Uh, I guess this is something that would be interesting if other people uh, want to know more about this. I, I know there's Goat Counter, there's uh, Matomo, uh, but I'm not really familiar with this. Maybe if you want to give an introduction for us to, to know more about this. Okay, look, I'll, I'll, I can summarize it in one minute. Basically, you remember the good old times of the web where there were page counters? You go on somebody's web page and there'll be a little number at the bottom, like, 103 and then we changed to 104. Only 90s kids will remember. <laughs> still, I swear there are still people using those page counters. But I mean, the, the, that was nice because that was open. That was, you, 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 see, you saw how much traffic people were getting, right? Um, and with Google Analytics, you just get, you, you get none of that. You know, you, nobody gives you access to their Google Analytics. Um, what I've been thinking about is that, you know, when you have open source analytics tools like like PeeWeek, or if you have, you know, privacy conscious tracking tools, which are not worried about the uh, privacy aspect because they don't have IP addresses, they don't have personal information about your users, you know, accessing, uh, you know, considering web analytics as a source of open data is, is an interesting, is an interesting just thing to do. And I don't, I don't really, I don't understand. I don't, I mean, there are websites like Alexa, which track the internet and tell you how, how high your site ranks. Um, and, and I mean, that is quite interesting in the software world, for example, to, to when you're comparing, you know, two software packages to see how much, you know, visitors are having. But that kind of thing, I think is not so much of primary interest to us. But I think maybe just as a, as kind of like, I, I really like your discussions, you know, like, let's, let's agree on some, some things that we kind of expect uh, a more of a philosophical level, you know, like frictionless data being uh, uh, you know, kind of this enterprise around the web of data and openness. Let's also support, you know, these types of initiatives to create more ethical analytics uh, solutions. Um, let's just let's just start by using them, encouraging each other to use them as a best practice. That's that's all. And I love that, and I I feel like in the sort of RFPs we're seeing, uh, you know, contracts and things that we're we're looking at you know, analytics is like, oh, oh, lately is always a big part of that. And it seems like a lot, you know, a lot of vendors, including ourselves, don't really know what to do with that. We're just like, oh, we can turn on Google Analytics, I don't know. Um, or often a government has their own like enterprise analytics solution that you just plug into, but it would be cool if there was more of a standard that was, yeah, more, more like seamless between the analytics and the rest of the data. Um, cause that is like you're saying it is valuable data in itself. That's what all those marketing co companies offer essentially, right? They say, oh, we're going to link your web analytics to your whatever sales statistics. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you can, you can pick out those signals and jump on them and orient your business. It makes sense, but it's not open the way they do it right now. And just one more thing, when I was talking to the felt, uh, to these uh, Fathom guys, I got the feeling that they were kindred spirits. <laughs> I see in, the, in these several of these uh, startup uh, analytics projects, just people who are thinking along the same lines as we do. So that it would be good to exchange notes with them. But what you're getting on is, a, is, a, is, is an interesting value proposition. I mean, we can start by just asking every open data portal to publish its web analytics as, as a data set, you know, that would be a very easy way to start. Would that, would that involve a sort of standard schema 
for, for, I mean, it'd be awesome if they all followed the same schema, had some sort of way in the mm -hmm. metadata to identify which was the analytics data set so you could sort of collect those and match them and everything. Yeah, totally. It's, it's not a difficulty schema. It's just timestamps and counts, fundamentally. Yeah. But you get into interesting possibilities, like when you think about these, what are they called? The funnels, you know, you click on page A, page B, page C, the, the paths you take through the internet, these breadcrumbs. I mean, the other thing we could think about is book, uh, browser history. You know, every, every web browser has a format for storing its history. Um, and, and that's basically also the same kind of data. It's just, it's on a personal level. How many times have I visited, you know, Facebook in the last month? Should I see the social network doctor to curb my addiction, right? That kind of thing. And do you happen to know if there's any open, um, either Fathom or Matomo, one of those solutions that's maybe more open than others? Because I see they all have like this kind of paywall, but how, how open really is the data with them? I'm sorry, I think you... you. Yeah, you're, you were muted. Sorry. I only know that P, the, the PWIC, the PHP based, now it's called Motomo. Um, and, and the one, but the one that was mentioned in the, in the, you know, in the links there that I think it's open source. That's the first, that's the first other like new open source one that I've seen. Sorry, is that the, is that goat counter? I believe it is, yes. There's, by the way, a, a post uh, on Hacker News this evening, which is really wonderful. It's, it's, it talks, it takes a, almost like a biological perspective, explains personal websites and a little bit the history of blog roles and these kind of hidden experience, well, the lost, lost experiences of the internet. I'll, 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 I was really enjoying reading it. I'll share it with you guys later. Nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it makes some really good points. Yes, yes, please. That sounds really interesting. Okay, I'm not sure. Do we have any other news? Is there some other topics we would like to bring before we wrap things up? Um, I, I just want to say one thing. I mean, I, I wrote a, um, a post on the Open Knowledge Forum, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually setting up a hackathon this weekend for like 100 people. And I'm going to look at the video from Evgeny and just use the opportunity to talk with developers about the new Python libraries. But yeah, we have a, we have a whole bunch of other events coming up in the fall. I'd also love to know what events you're going to, conferences, hackathons, that kind of thing. Maybe Open Data Institute, I think quite a few people are going to the ODI Summit. Um, and one thing I, 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 I might, I was thinking is that the United Nations are running this World Data Forum at the end of October, virtually. And I know this is like, you know, a bunch of diplomats and politicians, but we, um, it, it is hosted by the Swiss Federal Statistical Office, the same guys who run the Open Data Projects. And if you'd be interesting, I thought maybe we could, we could do something like a meetup, a networking, you know, network event around the same time and connect with some of these global discussions. That just came to mind to me the other day. A few days later is the, is the Swiss also virtual uh, digital sustainability conference where all the open source people get together. And again, that's a chance to talk about engineering standards and technologies to people. So that, that week at the end of October, 
I'll just put it out there. And if, if anybody wants to do a, a meet, you know, some kind of virtual hangout, a little longer session or something during that time, that would be cool. That sounds really interesting to me. Um, I'm not saying much this meeting. This is all new to me. I'm still trying to position everyone and position the conversations. Uh, but there's a lot of interesting things for me to follow up on from all this. I've got a lot of uh, things to Google and look up. Um, and we're particularly interested in in anything to do with um, with the UN, of course, because we work a lot with the UN, uh, with the WHO, with UNAIDS, with, with FAO. Um, so engaging with that and somehow, would, yeah, we'd be very interested in that. Yeah. I'm not sure we're quite in the right position to lead that though at this stage. Yeah, I just pasted two links. The one is to my post, which talks about all these events, but then there's a, a webinar coming up as part of that UN thing, specifically about COVID-19 data hubs. I think you guys maybe should join that. It's on 31st of August, which is next week, Monday. That's like a kickoff session for that October event. Cool. So that's one thing I wanted to share. Um, I had this other thought. I want to just throw this out there. Um, static websites. Put your hand up if you if you work on if you have a static if you run a static website. Just a quick show of hands. Just the two of us here. Okay, we're only four. That's fifty percent. Hey, not bad. I mean, sort sort of. That is my main project, but yeah, I'll put my hand up. <laughs> I I put this repository open so um, as a static site generator based on data packages. I just had this thought about, um, well, it's time, I mean, basically I run this project called Data Central. So for the, for the, um, for this weekend's hack days, this is, this is how I'm current state of the art. It's really, really bad. Basically, I have a really terrible static site generator that I'm using to advertise data sets in frictionless data format, but extremely spaghetti code Python that that some guys in Portugal wrote and then I continue with it. It's a mess. But I thought I thought I'll just throw it out. If any of you are interested in static site generators and kind of more modern technologies, you know, like UJS or Gridsum in this case, I'd love to connect with you and see, see if we can make something like that. The, uh, the first version of DCAN that we put out was uh, the front end was based on Gatsby, but we've sort of gotten rid of that <laughs> because it was too hard to always be building the, the pages and the environments that we were running it in. Um, but, but we do have, we, we're still using the same components library we've been developing for like, you know, in React to, to display different pieces of open data metadata and stuff. Um, and I think the new sort of CCAN front end app is kind of maybe a source of components or resources too. We basically we're, I mean, we're interested in the idea of like a components library that's separate from the app, from the actual DCAN application that could be used in sort of smaller projects as well. Jonathan, you're trying to say something. You're muted. Hey, I, I think one of the links you've shared to this chat, Oleg, is, uh, is, is still a private page on your blog. At least I'm getting an oops, that page doesn't exist or is private. This is just um, the last but one. The last oh. one? No, the last but two. The discuss.okfn, the, event, uh, the events okay. in Switzerland. That's just our that's just our forum. Nothing special about that link. Yeah, well I'm I'm sorry, okay, maybe I'm missing something. I'm copying and pasting into the browser and I'm getting an up that page doesn't exist. Just, just go to the forum, just go to the discuss okfn.org. And um, it's like the last the, the top one of it's like the fourth third or fourth from the top post. Just look at the latest posts. It's called Fall Events and Switzerland. Ah yeah. Thank you. 
Well, thank you a lot, Oleg, for sharing that. I'm, I'm going to make sure to circulate this information around. I guess we do want to be uh, around in more of those meetings. It sounds like this is something we want to do. And also take note uh, of uh, what you said about uh, making everything pluggable and with plugins and more sm smaller components. I think it makes a lot of sense. And um, I'll ask around what the plans are on this and uh, maybe we can update from Discord in the blog post or whatever, but I'll keep you uh, updated on this. Cool. Thank you. And I'll keep encouraging people to engage with frictional data and make data packages and use the tools and, you know, keep you guys posted as well. Uh, I'll, I'll try to be more on this Discord thing. Still have a hard time adjusting to it because whenever I go into Discord, I get like 50 notifications from all the gaming channels I'm in. <laughs> Hard, it's hard to resist the call of uh, esports. But anyway, yeah, it's cool. Make a, wor a work Discord account. <laughs> yeah, I know. That would be, that would be an idea. <laughs> yeah, thanks, everybody. It's good. Yes, thank you. Any final thoughts from anybody before we leave? This sounds like a no, so this was a, a nice meeting you again. Uh, hopefully we can uh, prepare more stuff in advance for next time. I'll make sure uh, to share with you um, the video that didn't work for the, um, from Evgeny, uh, so you can see a, a deep uh, explanation for frictionless pi. And if you do have any questions about any other tools that we have, we will be happy to, to produce any content that's needed, any kind of documentation, tutorial, anything, so we can let people know about what we are up to. Great, thanks. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Alec. Thank you, everybody, for Thank having you. been there. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry I can't share. I've, I've been making pancakes the whole time. I'm sorry I can't <laughs> share with you, but I wish you all a very nice evening. And uh, talk again soon. Thank you. All right.